Right now, 530, we're tracking a traffic advisory this morning. One lane of northbound I-75 is closed near the North Broadway exit after a semi caught fire this morning. We'll be reporting live from there in just a bit on WKYT this morning. Meanwhile, both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton have now made a big push for the presidential nominations of their parties. We'll have more on Super Tuesday just ahead. And today marks the four-year anniversary since several deadly tornadoes touched down across the bluegrass. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Welcome back into WKYT, where Kentucky mornings start. I'm Bill Bryant. I'm Rebecca Smith, and we're starting off on a little bit of a snowy note yeah, out there. Yeah, we are. We're flying around yeah. out there this morning. Micah says it's not uh, likely to stick much, if at all. Let's check in with him. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, light snow and also warm temperatures there on the ground. It's just tough for that combo to actually pan out. And what you're going to be seeing, some spitting flurries, a couple of snow showers here and there. Especially back toward the east and southeast, that's where you have the better opportunity to see a few snow showers, but just don't expect that to stick to the ground. By the afternoon, that's long gone. I would say by midday there for far eastern Kentucky, before midday, the snow showers will be long gone. Flurries around here will be long gone in the bluegrass region and westbound uh, there by 8, 9 a.m. By the afternoon, mid 30s, mostly cloudy skies. Look, we're going to hold on to this winter pattern in the next few days, and then we're going to look towards your weekend and into next week. Temperature slowly but surely rising, and I'll have that coming up. Okay, see you then. Thank you. Well, we continue to track an ongoing traffic alert for you this morning. A fiery semi crash on I 75 has caused some major delays. And things are getting better as they work to clean it up. Emergency crews say the crash happened just after 2 o'clock this morning, right in the northbound lanes near the North Broadway exit. That's 113 there at Paris Pike. WKYT's Mark Barber is live from the scene and has the latest on the traffic conditions. Mark, good morning. Good morning, Bill. Only one lane of traffic is open here on I-75 northbound. Again, this is by the exit for 113, and this long line of traffic is moving very slowly. Now, we're told that things may not clear up here for another couple hours, so these major delays could stretch on through the morning rush hour. Now, you can see just why things are moving so slowly out here. When you take a look at the eyewitness video, the semi that crashed out here causing these delays, it wrecked around 2 this morning. We're told that the driver lost control then that semi flipped and even caught fire, as you can see there from that eyewitness video. We're told that that driver fortunately was not hurt, but that what he was hauling, those auto transmissions, spilled over the highway. Now, they also spilled into the southbound lanes. However, this morning, those southbound lanes are all clear. Now, crews at this point, they're focusing their, their attention right behind me, working to, wreck, to correct that wrecked semi, get it out of here, as well as finish clearing that debris. So if you are planning to take this route as part of your morning commute, maybe you'll want to go ahead and plan a few extra minutes into your drive, because, again, construction crews out here tell me that it may be a few other hours before they're able to clear everything out here. So that's the latest from I-75. I'm Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, we'll stay right on top of that, let you know, but it's obviously there are going to be some delays yeah. in the short term there, uh, going uh, northbound especially. Well, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are inching closer to securing their party's presidential nominations after sweeping victories on Super Tuesday. Both presidential candidates seized the majority share of states yesterday. Hillary Clinton claimed the primaries and caucuses in seven states. Her different Excuse me, her Democratic rival, Bernie Sanders, secured wins in four states, including his home state of Vermont. Donald Trump won in at least seven states, collecting hundreds of delegates. Well, now that Super Tuesday has passed, presidential candidates are turning their attention to Saturday's contest, which of course includes the Kentucky Republican Caucus. Donald Trump made his case to Kentucky voters during a rally in Louisville yesterday. For nearly 45 minutes, the GOP frontrunner spoke on a variety of topics, such as his plans to improve the economy, create jobs, and improve education. Trump also took moments to acknowledge the thousands in attendance, reminding them of the importance of voting this weekend. So on Saturday, very important because everything we do, it's all wonderful, but if we don't vote, that's not so good. So Saturday, you have to get out and vote, okay? The 5th, you have to get out and vote. We promise, everybody promise. <laughs> there you heard it there. He wants everybody to vote. Trump's rally in Louisville followed Ben Carson's town hall in Lexington Monday. Senator Marco Rubio will visit the Bluegrass State uh, Friday morning. He has a rally scheduled for 10:15 in the morning at the Bluegrass Ballroom at the Lexington Center. Ted Cruz's campaign plans to send his father, Rafael, to campaign for him in Louisville and Bowling Green on Friday. 
Well, along with Kentucky, Kansas, Louisiana, Maine, and Nebraska will hold either caucuses or primaries on Saturday. For Republicans, Kentucky and Louisiana have the most delegates at stake, 46 each. Kentucky's Republican delegates will be divided among the candidates who have at least 5% of the vote. If you have questions about the caucus or where you need to go to take part, we have you covered there. All you have to do is go over to WKYT.com. There's a story. It includes important caucus information and also a link to your caucus location. We'll have a special coverage and special report Saturday evening on the Kentucky caucus. Well, it has been four years since deadly tornadoes ripped across the state. Morgan County was one of the hardest hit areas. Six people died there when an EF3 tornado hit West Liberty. Six people also killed in Laurel County on March 2, 2012. In all, more than 20 people were killed in Kentucky. The state saw nearly 20 tornadoes that day. You can track storms and the latest traffic with the WKYT Weather Plus traffic app. Download it for free in the app or Google Play stores. Well, the state house has passed a bill that would toughen sentences for people convicted of trying to kill a police officer or a firefighter. The bill is being sponsored by Representative Gerald Watkins. If it passes, the bill would require anyone convicted of that crime to serve at least 85% of their sentence. The House unanimously passed the bill yesterday. It is now headed to the state Senate. Well, the case against a man charged for a deadly shooting outside a Lexington strip club will move forward. A judge sent Clarence Taylor's murder case on to the grand jury yesterday. Lexington police say Taylor shot LaRoz Mitchell the morning of February 19th outside Camelot East on Richmond Road. Police say the shooting happened following a fight. During yesterday's hearing, a detective testified that Taylor admitted to the shooting after being arrested. Taylor's being held on a $250,000 bond. Deputies have arrested a man who they say drove a car while high on drugs with his one-year-old son inside. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office charged 36-year-old Wesley Wagers with DUI and wanton endangerment. After receiving a tip, deputies say they saw Wagers' car swerving on the road. They pulled him over late last night. They say Wagers admitted using meth prior to his arrest. Deputies say the child was in the front seat in an unsecured car seat. Well, new this morning, state police launched an animal cruelty investigation in Morgan County. They say they received a tip yesterday morning that two horses had been abandoned at a property along Highway 364. When police got there, they say they found the horses in very bad health. Morgan County Animal Rescue is now caring for the horses. Police are trying to figure out who owns them. Okay, our time this morning is uh, 5.39. Time to check live drive traffic and let's see what is going on right now. Keeping you updated on the situation on I-75 and uh, that is at uh, exit 113 where a tractor trailer turned over, caught fire at about 2 o'clock this morning. And as you can see displayed there, uh, the traffic is uh, either stopped or very slow, especially northbound. Now southbound travel is returning to normal. They've been cleaning up uh, for uh, several hours there. But again, northbound, we understand it's one lane, and we saw the live report from Mark Barber just yeah. a bit ago, and it's uh, quite slow. Yeah, and still so, a lot of you know emergency vehicles out there, so just keep that in mind if you happen to be in that direction. And so the rush is on to get all that cleaned yeah. up ahead of the morning rush hour. It doesn't quite look like they'll make it, but we'll see uh, as uh, things uh, this morning are a little slow out there. All right, a lot more news coming up for you Wednesday morning on WKYT. A store security camera captured the unthinkable as a Louisiana woman somehow managed to survive being stuck in a tornado. The must-see footage. Look at that coming up on WKYT this morning. We have temperatures in the 20s and 30s out there this morning. Big-time temperature swing today and also a few snow showers in the forecast. I'm going to talk all about that coming up next. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Look at our first solar defender radar network, and we're looking outside seeing snow showers, flurries. After a daylight yesterday where we were at 65 to 70 degrees, listen, we dropped roughly 35 degrees from noontime yesterday to midnight last night. 35 degrees. That's a huge front that blew on through, and now we're seeing the lasting effects of that. The northwest wind really pumping on in here. That's giving us snow showers, even a few flurries mixed in here and there. So none of this is really heavy, and none of this is going to cause any issues. Grounds are way too warm, 40s and 50s, and that goes from 68, Highway 11, AA Highway 64, all the way uh, through Rowan County and also Carter County. Goes southbound and southeast, still bits and pieces, just spitting snow here and there. Like I said, none of this is heavy and also ground temperatures 40 
to 50 degrees. Really hard. Put that combo together. It's really hard to actually get some accumulation out of this. Look at that. That is not impressive, is it? Just a few flurries. This is kind of snow I like. I don't know about you, but this is pretty good right here. We'll take this. It's very light, and also those temperatures are really taking a hit. 28 degrees there in Richmond. And that goes for Danville, too. 30s down south. And as we track throughout the afternoon, here's what we're going to be looking at the next few days. Just the breakdown for you. Today, during the morning hours, I would say 8, 9 a.m. here around the central zones, western zones, snow showers, flurries, they dissipate. But you go over toward the east, it's going to be before noontime. It'll just be a little bit after everybody else. Dry afternoon in store, though, as temperatures are in the mid 30s. So a chilly day today, but overall, we're not seeing many issues. Going in towards your day tomorrow, rain and snow showers. Just a pretty, pretty nasty day in store as we look for mainly rain. Few snow showers mixed in. Don't expect anything out of that either. It's trying to reach the ground and actually sticking. And then we hit Friday. Friday, a few flurries dry, uh, then dry. So you get a few flurries during the morning and then dry toward the afternoon. Still pretty cool. Next three days, your winter days. Then we hit the weekend. Check out your weekend. We're sitting there in the mid 40s on Saturday. Only a small chance of rain on Saturday, but that's your only chance for the weekend. Then we're at 52 degrees on Sunday. For both days, we'll call it pretty decent weather, especially there on Sunday at 52. Then we go off toward next week. So 30s today, guys. Then next week, you're talking about 70s. I mean, this is that time of year that it goes up and down, up and down, as this weather's trying to change, trying to transition off in spring. Next couple of weeks, long range, guys. I'm not seeing anything that will give us any snow in terms of accumulation. And really, the temperatures look to go up instead of down the next yeah, two weeks, just up. for the long range outlook. So it's looking pretty good. Like that. Yeah. Like that long range when it looks good. Right, right. When it looks bad, I don't even mention uh, it. We noticed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mike. The time is 546 now. Well, speaking of bad weather, this was a, quite a situation for a Louisiana woman who was forced to weather a tornado. Without shelter, and she's now sharing her story. Yeah, it is uh, quite the story to tell, by the way. As Karen Kaffa reports this morning, winds hitting 140 miles per hour uh, were going on, but she managed to hold on for life. To be alive today, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful. David I'm Sagona thankful. walked away able to tell his story. He owns Sagona's Hardware in Pankerville. For your reference, this is what it used to look like. Now, it's this, just a mangled mesh of metal. Sagona made all his employees get in the bathrooms and upstairs in the offices, and seconds later. As I was closing the door to the bathroom, my side wall got sucked out. I actually saw the side wall get sucked out. This weekend, Sagona attempted to check his security cameras and if they happened to catch anything. This is what he found. Now watch it again. Notice this lady come up to the doors, pull on them, and they're locked. You see debris beginning to fly, and seconds later, what looks like a big explosion. Kyra Johnson is that woman. She had just made her FedEx deliveries to Sagonas from the back door. She came out and looked up. I had never seen the sky swirl so pretty, and it was gray, but it was scary. So first thing you think, let me tape it. I want to show people. This is the video she recorded. You can clearly see the tornado, but Johnson says she was so tunnel vision that she never noticed it. Exactly two minutes later, it was right over her. I just braced myself right here between the Coke machine. It wasn't even a holding on. It was just to brace myself. That Coke machine fell over, and there really are no words to put to this video. How did she survive? God. There's no explaining that God, because after I seen the video, I didn't know what it really looked like. I just figured I was in a tornado. And Sagona <laughs> did not know Johnson right, prior to this. Now he says know. God truly had her in his <laughs> hands. Well, I got this made for you. God had us in his hands the whole time. Creating a bond they will never forget. Oh, it's yours. Baby, Look you. I love you. <laughs> I'll never forget you. You will always be part of our family. You're always a mine too. In Pankerville, Kieran Chala. Really dramatic video there. Yeah, Amazing that she walked away. Terrific story with a great ending. All right, it is four. Uh, it is five forty-eight now. Five forty-eight on WKYT. Coming up, you'll get the stories making news right now. We'll check traffic again. Update you on the situation out on I-75, where a fiery crash has had the, the interstate blocked there. One thirteen. And the latest details coming up.
Good morning. Welcome back into WKYT this morning. Glad you're along. It's Wednesday, 552, and a lot going on. Yes, let's take a look right now at some of the stories we're working on for you right now. We're continuing to track an ongoing traffic advisory this morning. At this time, only one lane is open at I-75 northbound at mile marker 113. That is around the Paris Pike North Broadway exit. Crews are working to clear this early morning accident. The semi flipped over, obviously caught fire. You saw the video. Happened about 2 o'clock this morning. Police say the roadway will not be fully reopened for at least another two hours. They advise if you have to take I-75 northbound this morning, give yourself extra time because that closure is causing significant delays. The Wildcats bounced back with a win against the Florida Gators last night. Efficient offense allowed the Cats to hold a double-digit lead for most of the game. The Gators tried to cut the lead, but UK was too much. Final score, 88 to 79. And some big victories for a couple of high-profile presidential candidates, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, inching closer to securing their party's presidential nomination after sweeping victories on Super Tuesday. A big night for the front runners. CBS News is projecting that both Trump and Clinton won at least seven of the states in play, securing hundreds more delegates each. Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, and Bernie Sanders also picked up some wins, offering some hope for their campaigns. Astronaut Scott Kelly is finally back on Earth after nearly a year in space. A uh, Soyuz capsule carrying Kelly and a Russian cosmonaut touched down in Kazakhstan before midnight. With this mission, Kelly has spent more time in space than any other American. A recent study shows that pregnant women should consider a vitamin D supplements. The new research in the U United Kingdom finds that taking vitamin D supplements during pregnancy may only help the bone health of babies born in winter months. Researchers say vitamin D supplements may be beneficial during wintertime pregnancies because levels can drop because of lack of sunshine. Stress may impact short-term memory. A new study from Ohio State University found mice who were repeatedly exposed to stress had hard times escaping from a maze that they had previously mastered. Researchers believe the findings could lead to new treatments for chronic stress. Well, cheaper fruits and vegetables could help save lives. Researchers say a 10% reduction in the cost of fruits and veggies through 2030 could lower the death rate from heart disease and stroke about 1%, saving more than 60,000 lives. 5.54 is the time this morning. Let's get a check right now on today's traffic trouble spots with a look at live drive traffic. Things looking okay out there. We do want to remind you of this spot we've got on I-75. A semi has uh, overturned, so they've got one northbound lane of I-75 open there, but it is a slow-going situation. Situation um, to keep you aware of that situation out there. Time to check now. It's making news online with Bill. Again, that is uh, around exit 113, Paris Pike. Now, right now on WKYT.com, we're keeping you updated on that uh, traffic scenario on I 75 in Lexington. Shut down again around exit 113, northbound, still closed. A fiery crash involving a semi. We have the story and the dramatic video online now, and of course, we'll keep you updated. The Super Tuesday results in a big night for Hillary Clinton and for Donald Trump, and with Ted Cruz and Bernie Sanders also pulling out some victories. It's just ahead of the Republican caucus here in Kentucky on Saturday. We'll continue covering that, including a WKYT News special report Saturday evening at 7, and we also have links uh, where you can find out about where to vote if you're a Republican wanting to take part in Saturday's caucus. It was an important bounce-back win for the Wildcats on the road in Florida last night. The Cats look good after that tweak by Coach Cal. Kentucky won at 88 to 70 over the Gators. The Cats now get ready for Senior Day and LSU on Saturday afternoon. Also check out our web story on the new adult coloring craze. Many working people are picking up their crayons and coloring as a hobby and escape from the everyday routine. It's a trend catching on around the country. On Kentucky.com, State Representative Ruth Ann Palumbo of Lexington filing a bill to close some loopholes after a Herald Leader in investigation revealed that a lot of homes on large lots and vacant development properties are getting a tax break that's intended for farms. And CBS This Morning coming up shortly with your eye opener at 7. And of course, we'll have local updates. Hey, join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter or Instagram, and for the latest anytime, WKYT.com. And the look outside is a snowy look for most of us, spitting snow. None of this is heavy, none of this is going to cause any issues. So we have the few flurries, a couple of snow showers earlier this morning. We head toward the afternoon. Before noontime, those are long gone. By the afternoon, 
We're in the mid 30s, just a chilly day in store, and we have that winter pattern taking shape. I'm going to talk all about that winter pattern coming up with another hour of WKYT News with more updates on the I 75 crash there. We'll talk all about that coming up.